I really love nature. The exquisite beauty that I see in nature, the awesome power, and the astonishing intelligence of nature. So with that as background, it's not surprising that when it came time for me to leave school, I wanted to do something in nature and helping nature. So I said to my dad, maybe I'll become a game ranger, and he laughed and he said, on the salary of a game ranger, you can hardly afford to bring up a family. He said, rather go into business, earn lots of money, and then buy your own game reserve. That way you, you fulfill your heart's desire, but you also have got the money to raise a family. So that sounded like a good plan about 40 years ago. So that's what I did. I went into the corporate jungle and started playing the corporate snakes and ladders games and 20 years down the track, I'm in London, I've got the pinstripe suit, company Mercedes, I'm doing okay. Until a little boy walks up to me and he says to me, Daddy, I want to be like you, what do you do? Well, that just about knocked me sideways because I realized just how far I drifted away from my ideals, my dreams, my ambitions. There's no way I had the money to buy a game reserve and hey, there just weren't enough rhinos in London to become a game ranger. So, so I did the next best thing, hung up the pinstripe suit, gave back the company car, and I went to work for an environmental NGO. And that began the next 20 years of my career, teaching people about how we're treating this planet, we're polluting it, and how that pollution is killing birds, animals, fish, and how that's going to have a knock-on effect on us, human beings. Because I really hoped that if I told enough people about how we're treating this planet, that they'd change their behavior, that they'd stop destroying the planet, that we could begin to heal the planet and in the process heal ourselves. Well, I'm 20 years down the track since that decision. And I look back. There's more pollution than ever before. Animals are dying out faster than ever before. Climate change is accelerating. So I have failed in the most important thing, I have failed. I'm not the only one who's failed. Al Gore, with his inconvenient truth, he hasn't succeeded in changing people's behavior. Even the world's leading scientists who are giving scientific facts to the world's leaders on what the damage we're doing, they have not made people change their behavior, business and politicians. We've all failed. And when that realization hit me, I realized, I can't carry on doing this. It's not working. I've got to do something different. But I still love nature. I don't want to see nature destroyed, because if it is destroyed, it'll be destroying me and my children. So that meant that I have to work out why people are not changing. And the moment I addressed that question, a couple of things became very clear. It's not for lack of information. There is plenty of information out there, but the information is not changing people's behavior. And it's not for lack of care. There's not a single human being that I know who doesn't want to have clean air, clean water, does not want toxins in their food, and when they get the chance to spend time in nature, they love it. So if it's not for lack of information, if not for lack of care, what is it? Well, Einstein, Albert Einstein, gave me a clue. He said, the world we have created has got problems, and you cannot solve those problems using the same logic that created them in the first place. Bingo. We environmentalists have been addressing the issues, the climate change, pollution, but these conditions are created by our human behavior, and that human behavior is driven by our thinking. So if we want different outcomes, We've got to start, but our minds, we've got to literally change our minds. Well, how do we do that? Well, surely, if we can identify the thinking that is creating the destructive outcomes, then we can identify the opposite that's going to be healing for people and planet. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the idea that I'd love to share with you. The thinking and the values that will help us to heal people and planet. And I'd like to share with you seven of what I call virtues of ecologic. And it begins with vision. 
The narrative out there today, if you talk about the environment, it's all about doom and gloom and pessimism. Well, pessimism and doom and gloom, they disenable you. They, they make you feel powerless and helpless in the face of the situation, as if you can't do anything about it. And that's not true. You can. If you find yourself having to climb a mountain, the worst thing you can do is keep looking down in fear of falling. You need to set your eyes on where you need to go. And that's what we need to do about the environment. We need to identify a clear vision of a future that we can have. Beautiful, clean cities, sexy, fast electric cars, homes, high tech, all powered by renewable energy. We need to clear, create a clear vision of where we want to go to that will inspire us and motivate us to take action. Then we really need to become more inclusive in our thinking because we are trained to become more and more specialized and more focused, right away from schooling to higher education to your, to your occupation. Typically, the more specialized you come, very often more money you um, earn. Specialization is good. It increases the depth of your knowledge, but very often that comes at the cost of breadth of knowledge. Very often you lose picture, perspective of the bigger picture. So in business today, a lot of decisions are made, and in, in politics, that might be good from a particular point of view, from a profitability point of view or an engineering efficiency. It might be good from that perspective, but not necessarily good for the greater whole. So we need to constantly remind ourselves of the bigger picture when we're making major decisions. Is it also good for people and for planet? Because if it's not good for people and planet in the long term, it won't be good for me. Nature. I mentioned the genius of nature. Do you know that the silk spun by a golden orb spider is proportionately stronger than steel cable? That may be interesting, but look at the difference. Look at the way we create that steel cable. We dig up the earth, we make mountains of mess, we take that stuff and we shove it into polluting furnaces and we add in toxic chemicals. And yet, spider can produce a superior product with no mess, no waste, minimal effort. Imagine if we learned from nature how to produce products like that with so little effort and no pollution. Well, in fact, we are at the cutting edge of science today, something called biomimicry, mimicking nature. And in mimicking nature, we are improving all sorts of products from clothing, transport, even our architecture. So the takeaway from this is that nature gives us everything we need to survive, our food, air, water. But if we engage with nature intelligently, it also helps us to thrive. So best we respect and protect nature like our lives depend on it, because they do. Three-dimensional intelligence. That 17th century French philosopher Descartes thought that the world operates like clockwork, and he said that's how we should treat the people and planet, using only the intellectual, rational mind. No emotions. They're messy, untidy, unpredictable, no space for them. Well, the truth is that business without compassion can be a monster. And science without compassion can be unbelievably cruel. You just need to look at the way that industry treats animals in industrial agriculture. It's brutally cruel. The intellect is a fantastic tool for measuring the quantity of things, how much, how far, how quick, how slow. But it's actually not very good at evaluating the quality of things. For that, you need a different kind of intelligence. You need emotional intelligence. Some people call it the wisdom of the heart. Now, if you can bring the intellect and emotional intelligence together, you get much more wise decision-making, more compassionate decision-making. And then there's another element. Innovation does not come from rational think thinking. It comes out of the blue from that genius intuition. So if we combine the three forms of intelligence that we were born with, instincts, intellect, and intuition, you get far kinder, more balanced thinking, and more productive thinking. Ubuntu. Hmm. Hollywood glamorizes the individual and the people who go against the norm, go against the trends, the superheroes, and, as I say, the, the, those who are 
heroes because they don't follow the normal trend. Well, expressing your individuality and being yourself is good. It's good and healthy. But if you take it to the extreme where it's all about me, 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 and to heck with anybody else, that damages community and society. It breaks society down. And the fact is, with climate change coming at us, no one superhero can solve that. And as individuals, you won't be able to survive the impacts of climate change unless you have, are in a strong community that can work together to, to deal with it. So best we start building Ubuntu communities right now to be able to cope with the challenges that are coming at us with climate change. Consumerism, that word. Too many of us have been, well, are victims of very manipulative advertising that tries to convince you that your status in society is dependent upon how much money and stuff you've got and your bling. Well, as a result of too many people buying into that thinking, we are now consuming the Earth's resources faster than the Earth can actually recover. It's not sustainable. We will run out of resources on that basis. So we've got to slow down. How do we slow down? Well, what if we evaluate each other instead of on how much money and stuff we've got? What about if we evaluate each other on our human qualities? A very much more mature way and a more authentic way of evaluating each other. Your intelligence, your culture, your skills, your kindness, your compassion, how much you contribute to society instead of how much you extract. Wouldn't that be so much kinder, more rational society to live in? And that would reduce the need for us to keep buying more and more stuff to prop up our egos. Three other things that you can do to become an ethical consumer. Buy what you need. Don't feed the advertiser's greed. Then buy quality products that last instead of disposable stuff that pollutes our seas. And don't buy those cheap products that are designed to fail so that you've got to keep buying more. And most importantly, buy products from organizations who show that they care about people and planet and produce their products in more ethical, socially and environmentally ethical ways. That will make a major change to the way manufacturers and produce their products. And lastly, sustainability. They say that money makes the world go round, and indeed it does, but money is typically generated by business, and business today is obsessively focused on short-term thinking. Well, that's like being obsessively focused on extracting as much milk as you can from the cow without bothering to look after the cow's long-term health and well-being. That way you'll kill the cow, just like we're currently killing the planet through our short-term thinking. So we need to constantly remind ourselves in our actions, is this going to be sustainable for people, planet, as well as profit in the long term? So those are seven of the virtues of Ecologic, and you can remember them by this anagram, V-I-R-T-U-E-S, virtues. The world we are in today has got problems. But I do believe that if we apply these virtues of Ecologic, we can actually begin to heal the planet and in the process heal ourselves. But to do that will require the participation of all of us. That is how slavery was overcome. That is how apartheid was overcome, by millions of people participating. So that raises the burning question. Are you able, are you willing to participate? Are you able, are you willing to evolve your thinking to become an ecological human being? If you are willing, then the thing to do is... I. Look at your life and see how you can apply the virtues of ecologic to the way you live and work, because together we can create a beautiful, healthy, happy society to live in and world to live in by evolving ourselves to become ecological human beings. Thank you.